Hi, this is Kevin Ashworth with Fighting Fair with Kevin. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. This is the second video in the parenting series I promised I would put up. Um, if you haven't checked out the video before, I talk about anxiety, all things related to anxiety, including parenting, which is a very um, important topic when talking about working with children and, and teenagers that suffer with anxiety. And really the information that I talk about to help parents can be implemented with anybody that lives with uh, an individual with anxiety. So today, I want to talk about some very uh, necessary things in the practical sense of how to help your child or teen or partner or loved one or whoever that is that lives with anxiety. And one of those is reassurance seeking. So I've said it before, but avoidance is probably the number one way to cope with anxiety because it's so effective, so immediate. Again, it's effective, it's not adaptive. But in a close second is reassurance seeking. What does that mean? So do you have the kids that are always asking you uh, questions about the places they're going or if they are good enough? What I mean is, um, mom, do I have enough friends? Or really those phrases come out like, I don't have enough friends and they're pulling for you to give them with more reassurance. Yes, you do, honey, you're lovely, Jeremy likes you. And then they tell you that that's not true because Jeremy's just a friend from the past. Or um, mom, I'm not very good at math or I'm not that smart. And these questions are phrased in a way to pull for reassurance to help with our self-esteem, our anxiety. These are also stated in ways um, where they're specifically asking for things. So who will be there tonight? Um, they're trying to gain certainty around their anxiety. I need to know everybody involved so I don't feel socially anxious. How do you know if you're engaging in reassurance type behavior for your kids? Well, it's easy. Basically, they're asking you a question they've already asked you before. So what I tell parents is the first time someone asks you a question, that would be assurance. The second time they ask you the same question, it's reassurance. Because what they're looking for is to feel less anxious or a different feeling that comes up despite the information that you give them. And this drives us crazy. It builds frustration as we try and manage their distress and give them more information. And we say things like, honey, I've already told you that 10 times. I don't know who's going to be at the party. Or I don't know uh, if there's going to be something at this restaurant that you like. These are the types of kids that will look up Yelp reviews, check out movie trailers before they see them, because really what they're struggling to do is tolerate uncertainty. And then its cousin is tolerating distress. And so because we know in order to help your children change their relationship with anxiety, we are trying to build tolerance in both of those domains, uncertainty and distress. So quickly, what are some things you can do? You can say to them, You've already asked me that once, I'm not gonna repeat myself. Or you can say, it sounds like your anxiety wants to gain more certainty, or it sounds like your anxiety wants you to know, or your anxiety is asking that question, and I'm just not gonna answer it. Now, I wouldn't surprise them with this response uh, out of the blue. I would talk to them first when they're in a non-anxious state, and I would say to them, hey, I am trying to help you feel less anxious, and every time I tell you that you're great, you're fabulous, and nothing bad will happen, that doesn't actually seem to give you the uh, reassurance that you need, and kind of seems to fuel more of the same in the next circumstance. So if I suspect that the question you're asking me is coming from a place of anxiety, I'm not gonna answer it. And hopefully, you'll build some tolerance to not knowing before those events. Is that fair? Cool, fair. And I would start there. So reassurance seeking, think about ways that you do it. Uh, write down ways that are often typical that your child or your partner or anybody asks you about it. And then come up with a plan. As always, do not implement these things during times of distress. And you can in implement them sparingly. You don't have to be black and white. You don't have to say, oh my God, we're getting rid of reassurance today. Uh, just provide less reassurance tomorrow than you did today. And more than you will the next day, if that makes sense. Have any questions, let me know. Thank you for checking out the video. Website is northwestanxiety.com um, and email is kevin at nwanxiety.com. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do now. I appreciate it and uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, bye-bye.